in the 1st, 2nd, and 5th districts for coming this evening to address members of the community on issues concerning the status and future of local health and human services. My name is David Bianchi, and I'm the president of the Human Care Alliance, an alliance of 50 agencies that provide 85 programs in collaboration with local government to maintain critical safety net services for the most vulnerable members in our community and help support the quality of life for all our residents. <clears throat> it's easy to get lost in the numbers when you look at the range and volume of nonprofit services delivered each year to our children, youth, families, and seniors. Each of us here has at some time faced a situation that seems insurmountable and beyond our individual abilities and resources. What's more important than the numbers is that unique moment when someone triumphs over the problem that threatens their health and safety and is able to overcome the fear, anxiety, and hopelessness that seem to never end. Those personal victories are celebrated each day, over and over again, thanks to the partnership between local government and nonprofit organizations in Santa Cruz County. As a community, we should be judged by how we treat the less fortunate among us and how we respond to their right to dignity and the basic necessities of life. The Human Care Alliance and its member agencies are not allowed to endorse individual candidates, but tonight's forum will help us decide which candidates should receive our personal endorsements. I would like to introduce the moderator for tonight's forum, Chris Johnson Lyon, a member of our executive committee and one of the planners of this forum. Chris? Good evening, everyone, candidates and community members. Thank you for being here. I'm Chris Johnson Lyons, I'm Executive Director of the Community Action Board and an Executive Committee member for the Human Care Alliance and the moderator for tonight. Um, we have a format tonight that's going to begin with opening statements from the candidates, two minutes each. We'll be rotating from the 5th District. We'll start with the 5th District and move this way. Uh, we have a timekeeper and the timekeeper sitting in front here, Clay Kemp from the Seniors Council. Clay will um, provide a yellow sign to let you know when we're at 30 minutes, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> the final stop notice. So we want to finish in 90 minutes. Um, we will not have time because of the number of candidates and the fact that we want to get enough questions in for questions from the audience, but you're all invited after the 90 minute period ends to come up and introduce yourself and ask your questions and uh, tell the candidates your concerns. So um, we want to also thank Santa Cruz Community Television. They are filming this. I uh, want to let you know that we have some refreshments here and to remember to pick up the candidate literature. Uh, is there anyone here who um, needs Spanish or would like to have Spanish translation? Hay alguien que habla español. Okay, so we, Chico, thank you for being available. If anybody else comes in, Carolyn will check and see and we'll take advantage of Chico's services. So um, we're going to begin first with a um, two minute opening statement. And so we'll start from this end with the fifth district and move this way. So, um, Eric Hammer, Great. we welcome you. Thank you. And, yeah, go okay. ahead. Thanks. My name is Eric Hammer. Uh, I am running for 5th District Supervisor. I was born and raised in the San Luis Valley, uh, fourth generation. It's a little bit louder. Okay, no mic. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, I was born into a family that's core philosophy is community involvement. And not just community involvement, but community outreach. My life and my family's life has been involved has been filled with reaching out and helping people and helping organizations. Currently, I sit on the Mountain Community Resource Center's advisory board, community advisory board. Uh, I sit on the board of directors 
of Community Bridges. I'm elected to the Boulder Creek Parks and Rec Board. Uh, I was the founding president of Youth First, which was a nonprofit <coughs> agency that did teen outreach in the San Lorenzo Valley. Uh, I'm president of the Boulder Creek Business Association. The volunteer, the degree in which my family and myself has volunteered is immense. Starting really young, at a young age, working and watching my mom work to create one of the first family resource centers in this county. And instilling into me how one person helping within the community to bring up the rest of the community can make a huge impact. And you folks sitting out here today are a perfect example of that. We each support each other. If you look at the programs that are part of this community, every one of them helps this community from start to finish. You know, whether you're, you're getting counseling in the beginning, taking that counseling and maybe having some problems and going through Janice, coming out of Janice and going into new life, going from new life back out into the workforce, we all help each other out. And that's what it's about to build a community. Thank you. I'm Bruce McPherson, uh, fourth generation Santa Cruz native, uh, and a, a candidate for fifth district supervisor. Uh, I would uh, have been active in this community throughout my life, as has my family that preceded me, the, each of those fourth gener four generation. I was the editor of the Sentinel. I was a writer for the Sentinel and wrote on county issues of this uh, of Santa Cruz County for 26 years. Elected twice to the Assembly and twice to the Senate and then was confirmed unanimously to be California Secretary of State, the 30th Secretary of State here. I have served on several charitable nonprofit agencies here as a, a chairman, a board member, uh, and a donor to them. Uh, and after having sat out from uh, uh, leaving as Secretary of State, people asked me and encouraged me to run. And one of the reasons I, I, I think I am in a good position to run is that with my experience, the knowledge, and the personal contacts I have in this period of what we call realignment, I think I'm in a very good position for, to speak up for the county and know where to get uh, the, the adequate resources that we richly deserve in this great county of Santa Cruz. Uh, a critical issue today for Santa Cruz County is, is leading the effort to find health for, uh, for funding for health and human care services. And I think I'm in a great position to do that. Santa Cruz County is very fortunate that, what, some more 30 years ago, the Human Care Alliance was formed. So we could put together more agencies together and, and uh, give services more efficiently and more effectively. I, when, I was served, when I served in the California legislature, I donated my pay raises to health and human service agencies as well as education in my own community. I think that's what we should do. We should be committed to do something like that when we serve you. And I think we are very fortunate to have the Health and Human Services uh, agency, uh, agency Alliance here in Santa Cruz County. And I, I appreciate your being here and your concern for better county government. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bill Smallman. Thanks for having me here. I'm also running for the 5th District Supervisor. Um, I'm originally from Marin County, um, and my, actually, my family actually was very involved, and my dad served two six-year terms as a judge there, and um, anyway, I'm a civil engineer. Uh, most of my experience is in public works construction, and I moved here in 91. Um, I'm not familiar with all the different organizations that you are in, involved with, but I am in, in very much... Uh, uh, knowledgeable, I mean not knowledgeable, but uh, familiar with the mountain community resources and the value churches that Eric's mom um, was involved with, and they've been very helpful. <laughs> and um, and a big part of my campaign is uh, improving the economy. In fact, that's half my campaign, and I'll, I'll be answering yes to number two. Um, and I, I really think that that's the way to go, and I think that's going to help. Um, get more revenue for um, these kind of services, which I have been told have been very beneficial for the community, so I highly support them. And, um, and um, also, 
Um, that's about it. I really want to support all your, um, it's probably an area of uh, the government that I'm less familiar with. I'm more familiar with infrastructure improvements and that kind of thing. But my wife's a, a registered nurse and so she, and she uh, actually got injured and she became a ergonomics consultant. So she goes around and, and she uh, deals with a lot of workers that get injured and that kind of thing. So, um, I, you know, I'm well aware of a lot of different health issues that she deals with in her career and how to help. Thank you. Well, good evening. My name is Zach Friend. I'm running for the second district. And I wanted to first by simply just thanking all of you for being here because you know, quite frankly, local elections really do matter, and who you elect uh, at the local level really matters. As we've seen beginning with the end of revenue sharing at the federal level and all the cuts at the state level, where the differences can be made is here at the local level. You know, we've, we've seen some of those cuts to, to health and human services. We've seen the cuts to a number of the HCA programs, and really what Human Care Alliance provides are, are services of last resort. I feel exceptionally privileged to be able to even be standing here up here to speak with you. It's a real privilege, as all of us would probably agree, to even be able to run. I mean, I was able to go to graduate school and get a degree in public policy. I was able to work in both houses of Congress, the White House, come back home here for the last 10 years work in local government. And as I've been out meeting people, I hear how many voices aren't being heard, and how many people couldn't even be sitting up here with the fortune to be able to run. So it's a real privilege to be able to even stand here and have this conversation. But because of that, well, there's a great responsibility associated with it. We have a great responsibility to view health and human services in the same light that we view so many other things. Because there are a lot of people in this county that are hurting. There are a lot of people in the second district that are hurting. There's high unemployment in the southern portion of the district. There's a number of people, as I've gone door to door, that I've met that are utilizing these services, that need these services. And for the last decade or so that I've been working in law enforcement, I've partnered with a number of these services in so many key ways, from women's support, from homeless services, to health services, and even to the Janus program. These provide so many essential things that you just simply have to do outside of the governmental realm. It, it really runs in tandem with the way the governmental services are provided in this county. And I've seen it firsthand what it can do and the important role that it can play. So I actually just want to thank you for what you're doing out there. And uh, I know that you definitely have my support. Thank you. Good evening, thank you for being here. My name is Antonio Rivas and I'm running for County Supervisor for the second district. I see a lot of friendly faces because I have been working with you for, for almost eight years as a city council member and as mayor of the city of Watsonville. And just to let you know, I've been working in the subcommittee for the Human Care Alliances and always been supportive of all of you. Make sure that all of you get funded from the city of Watsonville, provide those funding. One little on my background is uh, I was born in Mexico and immigrated. If you ever came, I was one of those uh, uh, children that they were in the border selling chicles and newspapers at that time. But I was lucky enough to, uh, to get my, my citizenship through my father. And through my father, I was then was able to, to become a microphone worker, went with my father and throughout the areas. I was homeless, I live in a van, I live under, under the grapevines, and all those, that's a little bit of background. But I found my, my wife also the same thing. We found him that he was living in a, in a bus, uh, cooking, and we were able to know each other and marry. Now we're married for 42 years, 42 years of marriage, and three wonderful children that now they are in college. I was very lucky to get an education, become a teacher, get my credential, and now I have 35 in public education. I work in, uh, and first in, uh, in here in Pajaro Wilde School District, and then in Salinas Junior High School District, which is the person that I employ. With that in mind, I, all I can say to you is that Human Care Alliance is a great uh, service to our community, all the way from immigration to the homeless, to, to healthcare, to transportation, everywhere else. Our, our South County is a big need. You always, you know, you're always there to help us and to assist us to our community that we serve. We see a lot of poverty there, and when I see more poverty 
in, 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 the, in the mid county too. So we are here to help you. I will do whatever I can to continue supporting you. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Leopold. I'm the Santa Cruz County Supervisor from the First District. Welcome to Live Oak. Uh, thanks for being here and thanks for inviting us uh, to talk about our campaigns. As I look out across the audience, I see so many people that I work with in my 26 year history here in Santa Cruz County. I, was, uh, I did community organizing out of uh, college at a UC Santa Cruz. I ran a business, was the executive director of the Santa Cruz AIDS Project, served eight years on the Cabrillo College Board. And during that time, I had a great uh, opportunity to work with so many people in this room, uh, advancing the cause of, of human care uh, services, but also advancing the needs of the entire community. When I ran <clears throat> four years ago, I ran a grassroots campaign that involved hundreds of people uh, coming out and talking about what they wanted to see in, on the Board of Supervisors. And when I got elected, uh, I tried to carry that energy into office and I worked very hard to get the community involved in the important decisions that affect our lives. When we were uh, trying to do uh, community planning around our redevelopment agency, I said, I don't want just 20 smart people, I think we should have 200. And uh, we did a series of workshops that attracted over 500 people to participate and envision what we want here in Live Oak and Soquel. Uh, when, it came, when neighbors came to me and said, we're having a problem with vacation rentals in our neighborhoods, and they're changing the face of our residential neighborhoods, I worked to engage the community. We did a very public process, at times difficult, but ultimately uh, came up with a, a, an ordinance uh, that balanced the interest and brought in a million dollars to our general fund. Those are, those are dollars that can be used uh, in lots of different ways. I'll continue to keep on working on that in my second term, and I look forward to working with all the human care services as well as the entire community to advance our common goals and make Santa Cruz an even better place than it is. Thank you for having me. Hello, my name is Charles Paulden. Um, I don't know. Uh, the, uh, the Sentinel said I'm kind of a throwback to an old era. One that believes in physical activity, surfing, um, teaching yoga, teaching a senior uh, fitness. Um, so I guess my Boy Scout years is do a good turn every day. Just going to college and, and studying psychology to try to help people. Studying health psychology and community psychology. Working at community center. Working at a homeless shelter working at a, in Boy Scouts first aid camp, um, working with Jay Moriarty, with CORE, with Sheriff's Activity League. Um, again, if we're, five, if we're going this way, fifth generation California, all those types of things too, 40 year resident. Um, working with Tandy Beal, um, working, doing very lots, many, many things in this community. Um, I, part of the reason I'm running is, is um, I was trying to get a community center in Pleasure Point. I was part of the Pleasure Point planning process because our neighborhoods were being overrun with vacation rentals. Unfortunately, rather than saying we don't run a business in a residential neighborhood, um, our supervisor took a million dollar payoff. He's spending $88 million in RDA funding that could go to so many more things in this county. So a million dollar is paltry amount of money. Most of what's going was in one square mile this area. We tried to get a community center so our seniors, our kids, could have a place to meet. Mr. Leopold said, if I could do it and run it, we could maybe do it. Well, I could do it. I've run community centers before. We'd have a wedding across the street from the beach once a week. I think we'd probably run most of all the, all the things we have in this county. So for truth, justice, and the American way, Vote for me. I'm for everything good, nothing bad. Love all your friends and pet all your pets. Oh. <laughs> uh, Dave, Chris, Community TV, and all you people that have uh, donated so much to the community. Um, I'm going to be saying the things that people normally don't want to talk about. I think there's more than just the safety net, there's safety in the first place. And one of the crimes that's being done against the people of Monterey Bay area is something called Operation Cloverleaf. Um, you can Google it, it's there, it's tangible. You can go over the hangars over at Fort Ord where there's some drones and some airplanes that test the particulars <coughs> that are in the air. And if you talk to some of those employees off the record, 
They'll tell you they know about Operation Cloverleaf and the aluminum and barium that was a front page story last May in USA Today. Not a word in the three newspapers here that are owned by Bank of America and Bill Gates Foundation, meaning the Mercury, the Sentinel, and the Monterey Herald. You're, you're totally uh, blocked out by that information. We have two members on the present Board of Supervisors that are on the Air Resources Board. Uh, Mrs. Perry, uh, Perry and uh, Mr. Cooner, they know what's exactly what's happening and they won't tell you about it and it's harming the individuals. You can have the kids out there playing hopscotch or, or skateboarding and they can look up and they can tell you the difference between a contrail and a chemtrail. A contrail is ice crystals that evaporates and you know it, it just follows the airplane. The chemtrail will drop, you can see it float, they come down. In the USA Today front page article, uh, they have people from the EPA and the Navy and other people, they said it's the worst case scenario. You're treating people for all kinds of ailments that are coming from sources such as this. And I call, I'm running against a political machine because they do all of this stuff that injures health of the people that you're, hurt, uh, that you're trying to help. Fluoride, you have Louis Viejo who uh, forced uh, against a, a popular vote to put fluoride in the water in Watsonville. All of these people taking these positions endorsed my opponent. And I wish I had a little bit more time I could uh, I'd tell you more about it. Um, also, the other last thing you should be aware of is the vaccination dangers. Look up Dr. Mary's monkey. You know that vaccinations do have uh, a, a bad effect on the immune system. Thank you. Good evening. So we have a, a, a late arrival for a candidate, and we'll see about getting you a placard here, but um, we're making two-minute uh, opening statements, so you're Rich McLennis. I'll talk real slow then, because I have one minute speech. <laughs> <laughs> that was my only joke. And for which district? What district? What's that? Which district? Oh, the second district. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of an accidental candidate. I, uh, I applied <laughs> to run four days before the... Um, the deadline. Um, I did it because I bought a, a historic building down in Rio de Mar Flats called the Seabreeze Tavern. And I've been um, harassed by the county ever since. And it's a long story, and I don't want to bug you because I only have two minutes. But basically, through the course of buying your story and running the business, I've been red tagged, uh, cited by the fire marshal wrongfully, sued twice by the county, won both times. In fact, they just won just a couple of weeks ago. So I, I've kind of been through the ringer. Uh, I don't necessarily have a specific speech for you here tonight because I found out about this yesterday, but um, I know what the county does right and what they do wrong and what they're doing wrong for small businesses. I imagine they're probably doing wrong for lots of other areas, including um, the, the people that need the county most right now and, and that are falling through the cracks. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not necessarily the most groomed. I'm not a uh, um, polished politician. But I've been able to fight the county on my own for the last five years, so I've been kind of underwater, but I've got it kind of behind me, and I'd love to work for the rest of the second district if you're out there and uh, fight for you when the county uh, does, does something wrong. Thank you. Who are you? I'm the beer tender from Cedarese Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> also the janitor. I wash the dishes. I'm the cook. <laughs> and I want to be supervising. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to begin with the first question, and we're going to begin with the second district here, and move this way. We began last time with the fifth district. Um, and this first question is: What value do you place on the services provided by the Human Care Alliance agencies? And what do you see as the role of county government in supporting these services? So, um, Zach, Brent, could you begin? And then we'll be moving this way toward the first. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, how do you place a value on an essential service? How do you place a value on a service of last resort? I mean, there isn't really, um, that's a tough question of how do you place a value on that? when? In my in my line of work and what I see every day, I see people that are in, that are in their worst potential situation, that just need help, and a lot of your services provide that help. And how is there a value on that? It's to that individual that it touches, the, the value is is priceless. 
to that to that person. And, and as far as what do I see as the role of the county government in supporting them, I mean, it's you're providing a lifeline to the county government in many respects by the services that you're providing. I think that to me, uh, the role that I see that the county government should view it as an equal partner with every other service that the county provides. This is something that is uh, no different. It is an essential service for people that need it. And it's when people are, are at their worst, at their lowest, or just need a boost of help. Uh, people in this room, and I've seen it so often, uh, do it without judgment. Help people out uh, in that situation. It's a really uh, remarkable sight, and I just don't think that really there's something that you can place an actual value on that for. Thank you. For me, uh, uh, human care services is very, very, very important. Um, one of the things that uh, we need to continue is that the county continue to provide those services no matter what the need is. I think the need is there. The need is, you know, uh, everywhere. It's something that we need to continue to do that. Uh, it's important that we go all the way to the, to the people that very, very need, you know, employment to the person that needs uh, support in different ways, uh, all the way from uh, uh, the work that Defensa de Mujeres does do, and at the same time what the Immigration Services does and do. Uh, all of the seniors that need the help all those areas that we need to provide those services, I think is something that is very, very important. Has the city of Watsonville, has uh, council and mayor, that's one of the things that we always say, we need to put priority on, on those support services. And I will continue to do that as a county. You have my commitment. And also you have my commitment that I will donate uh, part of my 20% of my salary as the county supervisor to the nonprofits. That's something that I'm committed to do that because they're important to me, because they helped me when I was in really low, and I will continue to do that. Thank you. Um, I, um, I think what the county does as far as helping the, the uh, nonprofit agencies is real important. I, at the Seabreeze, um, I have a back room area and I always make that available for nonprofits to hold um, revenue um, re or, uh, revenue raising events there with, and I don't charge to rent the back room. So um, I, I'm not completely familiar with the specific subject, but I know that um, we can always be doing more for uh, the people we need in the county. And I think the, uh, the nonprofits do a great job of that. They just need more support from the community as well as the county and uh, I don't know if the state and federal governments are helping at all probably right now and they're probably not so it's probably falling back on the county and the local government to, to do that and uh, I definitely for them. Thank you. Supervisor Lee. These are tough times in Santa Cruz County right now. We know and you see every day that one in four people in Santa Cruz County are in public assistance. You know that over 100 people are losing their homes to foreclosure every month in Santa Cruz. Uh, you know that we have over 13% unemployment in our county. Uh, Human Care uh, Alliance services are part of the front line of services for the most vulnerable members of our population in Santa Cruz County. We have got to work to provide funding to, to ensure that these services are available to people during times of need. Um, the county government as a whole cannot provide everything. Uh, county staff does a tremendous job with a, a wide range of ser services, but we need to partner with our human care services to ensure that we have a safety net for, for people at risk uh, and people suffering in this terrible economy this lesser depression that we are experiencing right now. Uh, the county has had a long-term partnership with the Human Care Alliance that has benefited uh, our community. There is great data <coughs> to support that, and uh, as a county supervisor, I remain committed to ensuring that we have funding for our human care services, um, that, uh, that we leverage every dollar that we can at the county to be able to support um, our human care services, and ensure that these uh, services are available to as wide a range of uh, people as possible. 
um, you are critical to the support that we need to offer in Santa Cruz County. Thank you for your work. Charles Colvin. Um, somebody told me don't cry over spilled water, so I'll let that one go. Um, my, I was talking to Dave Thurman, who's a career counselor, and he was trying to describe me, and he just said, you're a healer. You're always trying to heal everything. If a bicycle's rusted, I try to fix it. If a community's broken, I try to help it. If a friend is coming to me with need, I try to help them. And we have such a strong community in Santa Cruz. So many of my friends have been part of the 12-step program. There's so much, and, and I, I bow to you for all, all the work that you've been doing. As Mr. Leopold said, it's, it is important. We save so much money as a county, we could not begin to pay the people for all the volunteer work, for the work that comes from our hearts, for doing good, for doing kindness. All those things heal us. It's part of the reason I teach yoga. It's part of the reason I do guided meditations for our higher good. What we want to be is we want to be a community that comes from our best selves. We want everybody in our community to be good and strong and healthy. When I was landscaping, it was the same thing. You nurture them. You nurture the plants. You give them what they need, and they grow. We could have more community gardens. We could be feeding each other that way and coming together and helping each other. We need more community centers within our communities, within walking distance with each other. It doesn't have to be fancy. So we can do all these things together, but we need to work together. The county can assist us, but we're the ones that are going to make this a better place. I appreciate you. I value you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, I think the community's health really depends also on, on the health of the economy. And what we've been doing is choking off the small businesses. This is last week, five to nothing vote, 62 pages of requirements for businesses and, and for, for real estate. It sets up various commissions. It sets up open-ended laws. You cannot have a healthy a community without a healthy economy. Several weeks before that, the uh, Board of Supervisors also passed a series of laws affecting health workers and people that are helping their neighbors or, 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 or their friends. Uh, more regulations, more laws that are driving the businesses away and preventing you from having a, a, an economy in which we all uh, benefit by. Um, Again, strangely enough, there, there's some people that, that benefit from, from the laws that these that five to nothing votes are always, always going to. Uh, power is one of them. We've seen the energy of that shoot up. In fact, today they were talking to the Department of Interior is talking about $9 a gallon gas. Now, we had just a couple of years ago, uh, the Moss Landing was bought out by an outfit called Blackstone. They paid a premium over the, over the assessed value because they knew ahead of time. The cartels know ahead of time. Blackstone is run by Pete Peterson. He's a billionaire. He headed the Council on Foreign Relations. His vice president is Alan uh, uh, Shorman. He's a member of Skull and Bones. You need to know that because a lot of the, the policy that's made in the county uh, comes from the international community through an outfit called ICLE. ICLE is a front for the World Bank. They've got this whole Monterey community uh, by the net. And these people basically have been doing administrative law for the United Nations and the World Bank. We're a little different than Greece and a lot of these third world countries that, that we think are much lesser than us. That's not true. With our second question, we'll begin with the first district. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. The fifth district is overlooked again. Yeah. <laughs> You see what we're dealing with. Um, when you say to put a value on the services that the people in this room give, the word that comes to my mind is priceless. You cannot put a value on it. Um, although, the Board of Supervisors can, because it's known that your program that you run, you run better than the county can. Cheaper, better, and more understood uh, because you work in it every day. 
Um, so that's why the, camp, the county looks to you to help provide those services. I think we need to continue supporting that. If I take a look at, at the organizations that I've worked with, uh, Valley Women's Club putting on the Redwood Mountain Fair, you know, working out there for a year to put on this fair to raise money to give back to the nonprofits, whether it be for six to eight years cooking at the human race with the volunteer center to try and raise money for all the programs, whether it be serving on Mountain Community Resource Center's board for six years and helping it merge with Community Bridges so that it could be a sustainable program providing services in the San Lorenzo Valley, whether it be starting an HIV anonymous testing site at Cabrillo as a student there in partnership with Planned Parenthood, with SCAP, with Condom Co-op from UCSC. This is what I bring to the table, the ability to get my hands dirty working with the agencies that are providing the service. And how do I think the government, the Board of Supervisors should do that? I think they should be out there working with you every day, meeting with you, trying to improve the services that are out there and recognizing that we need to expand on them. And not only expand on them, but how can we work even better in partnership? Because like I said in the beginning statements, each organization helps somebody in the community follow the life process. Thank you. Uh, how valuable it is, is um, what you provide in the Human Care Alliance, it, it's just, um, you can't even consume, uh, put it in one, one sentence and say this is how, how important it is. Because every, every agency of the 50 agencies that you represent is vitally important. I think every, each and every one of you would say, my agency is the most important. But you know, because you're together in this alliance, you've brought together understanding of the needs of the others as well. I don't think it's ever been more important that we, as a county, direct our attention and receive the input from you of the Human Care Alliance. And that's because of what we call realignment from the state that's going on right now. It started in October, and most people said, yeah, it just re it really focused on the law enforcement system, the judicial system, in which convicted nonviolent felons would stay here in the county and not be sent to state prison. I think that's a good thing. I think local government is the best government that we have. But also included in that was were child welfare services and uh, community mental health programs that we need more direct attention to, and they're putting that on us. And we need you in the, hum uh, health, uh, the uh, Healthcare Alliance and Human Health Services uh, agencies, we need you to help us. And we will continue to, to reach out and I, I see how the people in this county do reach out and they want to have you, uh, they want to serve. My wife and I are married, I've been married 44 years, so two up on you. But, uh, <laughs> we were chairs of the, uh, the Second Harvest Food Bank two years, record 2.1 2 million pounds. I'm, I'm still, I'm the advisory board chair, 2.7 million pounds. And I can tell you that two or three years ago, people who were giving to the Second Harvest Food Bank are on the other side and having to receive them. We're in some dire circumstances here. We need your help, and I'll, I can assure you I'll be there to support your, your, what you have to offer and the services to this county. So, like I said earlier, I'm not totally familiar with all the various different groups except for Mountain Community Resources and Valley Churches. And I moved here right after the earthquake and actually I live in a very rural, probably the cheapest houses in Santa Cruz County. That's why I was able to afford a house for the first time. It's a very beautiful area, but a lot of people who live there after the earthquake, I can't tell you. Um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, you couldn't place a value on uh, those groups. Um, so. Uh, you have my pledge for their full support. Thank you. Now we're ready for the second question. <laughs> uh, uh, this question is, one proposal to help protect the county safety net is to adopt a policy committing the level of support for community programs that would be a fixed percentage of annual county funds. With this idea, community program funding would rise and fall 
as the overall county budget fluctuates. And the question is, would you support this proposal? So we'll begin with the first district and we'll ask Supervisor Bill Bill to start. Uh, when I was the executive director of the Santa Cruz AIDS Project, I was vice chair of the Human Care Alliance. Uh, uh, Karen Delaney from the Volunteer Center was the, the chair. And so I, I spent every, uh, every year that I was there uh, going to the Board of Supervisors as well as city councils to advocate for funding uh, for nonprofit services. Uh, in 2009, I was appointed by the board to serve on a, a community programs task force. And one of the things that that task force showed very clearly is that over a 10 year period, uh, at the county budget, health and human services funding went down 22%. Uh, meanwhile, areas like law enforcement grew, uh, almost doubled uh, in, in size. Uh, that wasn't a conscious decision by the Board of Supervisors. I don't think that they planned on cutting services 22%, but the result was the same. The funding was down. Uh, since uh, we have that uh, uh, data, I've used it every year to advocate at the, at the board level for not only keeping the funding, but trying to find a way to increase funding. Uh, should we have a fixed percentage? I would be really interested in taking a look at that and trying to figure out what that number is. Uh, for, uh, for 10 years uh, or 12 years, it's fluctuated between 3 and 5%. What's the right number? That's a good discussion. I supported the community program task force going on because I thought that gave us a regular platform to come to the Board of Supervisors and talk about the need in Santa Cruz County. Uh, we need to continue to find ways to do that, uh, to talk about that and to bring it to the fore on a regular basis because the, the funding is too critical, the services are needed, and we need to find a way to pr pr uh, protect and provide and expand these services, especially during tough times. Um, personally, I would like to see the funding drop to zero and have no need. But I don't think that's going to happen too quickly. I think we can reduce the need by good planning in good communities, by having places for people to live, to having living wages, to having uh, one single payer health care to have more community outreach to help people, to rise up our youth, to honor the people that are working, to embrace our seniors. I don't think our seniors are a bygone era that have no ideas of what's good for us, as the Sentinel seems to think. I think that we have a lot of good ideas. I think maybe that it can fluctuate. There may be times we need more than a fixed percentage. Hopefully there'll be a time when we're, we need none. That would be my desire. And I think that each one, each person that we heal, we affect tenfold. We need more people working in our community, keeping the money in our community so we have a multiplier effect. I would love to see community gardens. I would love to see us eating. I'd love to see less we're building half a million dollar affordable housing, $500,000 affordable housing. Think how many people we could fund if we didn't overbuild. How many people are, we don't need that much space. I, I've lived very modestly in my lifetime. I've, and it's possible, we can do it. It's not about what we have, it's who we are, what we have, and how we share it with others. Bring people up, heal each other, grow as a community. We are those people, and I hope to see us grow until this budget is zero. We'll get other jobs. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's uh, dangerous to put a fixed level. You don't have the uh, freedom to uh, adjust to how the society and the, uh, the uh, <coughs> The, the various ages of the people and the, and the businesses. And uh, you can see the problem when it happened with the schools where we have a fixed budget. And no matter what happens, there's no discretionary spending by the people that you elect to take care of the problems as they occur at that particular time. And we also find that if there's a fixed level, a lot of times it's abused. We shouldn't always be trying to expand a role or in, incorporate or enlist more people in a program. We try to get them in a position where you can get them off a particular program. 
Uh, we find, for instance, in, in the school reference, uh, you, the private schools and the Catholic schools, uh, for half the price that you pay for public education, do a better job. And you've got to remember that this is a transfusion of money from the people out there that are working to these services that we need and require in our community. And the best way to do that is to be as efficient as you can and to deal with what's happening in that particular uh, time period. You can't project this forward for very long. There may be times when we really need to increase this uh, for, for some uh, catastrophic reason or another. But I, I think it would be wrong to have it a, a fixed uh, uh, situation. And also there is an untapped resource that has been very busy in our community uh, uh, telling us how to govern. And those are the billion dollar foundations that, uh, that are up and down the state of California. Uh, one aggregate is in a group called California Forward. It consists of the Irvine Foundation, Hawes, uh, uh, Packard, other ones. Hawes, they, they, they construct all their manufacturing overseas. They bring their profits here. They don't pay a, a, a dime's worth of tax. And they tell us how to run our government. Um, I think this needs to end if they want to benefit uh, by being in the United States, they should create some jobs here, or they should pay taxes to benefit the people that allow them to do this. Go back down to the fifth district now. Um, as far as funding goes in a percentage base, I think that our services are needed much more when the funding budget goes down, the sources go down. You know, I think having a one set fee across the board that helps fund us is not necessarily a good idea. It, it, can, it can be very limiting. Um, one thing that I have seen is, I, I look at all the organizations that are here as a family. I've been part of that family for most of my life. And as with all families, we build together when there's a problem. You know, I've heard this realignment, the money's not gonna come from the state, that we need, support, we need leadership from the state level to be able to understand that. You know what, we've been doing that as a family for the last five to 10 years. We have been working here trying to manage the bu budget shortfalls. And what we've done is we've worked together. Some of our agencies have merged with other agencies for, so that we can continue providing services. We have reached out to within our own communities to help raise money from our own members. We have phone-a-thons, we have fairs, we have walk-a-thons, bowl-a-thons. You know, we reach outside of our own agencies and work together. I think we still have that power. If I'm going to look at how we're going to help the budget shortfalls, I'm going to look to this group and have them continue to come together and problem solve, and especially around budget issues. And then bring a proposal to the board and say, hey, this is how we can work. You know what, I don't think we're done merging. I don't think we're done working with each other and trying to find out where some of the duplicated services are. It's out there, we're gonna have to look at that because we're gonna have funding cuts again in the next couple of years. You know, and, and we're gonna have to ask to tighten our belts. But I don't think that we should take that as a, as the end all, we've we've survived as a family through it already. I, I don't think it'd be a wise public policy to uh, lock in a percentage, and so it, it just reduces flexibility. And in fact, I think it, you run the risk of hurting what you stand for and helping the community through your nonprofit charitable agencies. I think. When there is a time of need, we need you and your agencies more than ever. And I think maybe we should put a floor on it that these are, these are human beings, these are people that we're serving and we're, we're dealing with here. This is why we should have at least a basic floor so it gives you some assurance that you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna stay there and hold there. Now, that even going to that puts in jeopardy some further cuts in other areas. But you know the way it's been worked, the way it's worked before, uh, it, we've we've uh, the health and human service agencies have been hurt more than some other agencies. I just think that a better way to do is would try to maintain a floor here, because when when the uh, the budgets go down and people more people are out of work and there's more need here, 
And this community, this county responds so brilliantly year in and year out or catastrophe in, catastrophe out. It's amazing. I don't think we should uh, have it tied to the budget because we've seen how the budget has dropped. And I'm not so sure that it's a good idea to drop the services that you provide. And you have set a really great example, really throughout the state. This is one of the, the, the pre premier counties that gets its act together, literally, of the community coming together and providing health and human services for the people in our county. We're to be congratulated, you're to be congratulated for what we do. It is it's more, most poignant when we come to a crisis, a flood, or fire, an earthquake, and it seems like we have them all <laughs> sometime or other, but you react and you really come to the fore. I don't want to let that, that level of service and commitment be, uh, be lowered by the county. I just think we ought to at least keep you where you are, and then let's see how much better we can make it. That, that became a real believer that uh, capitalism works, and that's why I believe that the economy is a, the, one of the biggest issues. And I absolutely think it should be a percentage if the, con if the county makes more revenues than the, um, than all of your agencies should make more money. And the beauty of it is that more people will get more jobs because more jobs will be created, so less people will need the actual services. But one thing we don't get, as a, most governments don't get, the economy always goes in the cycles. It has, you know, since I, <laughs> you know, so most of our lifetime, we know that it goes in dips and, and it goes in different cycles. So when you do, when we do get more revenue, then it's time to put away savings for the next downturn, the next cycle. So I'm absolutely, I'm in favor of maintaining, like I said before, of, of you know, my pledge to support the Human Alliance, Care Alliance, and to have a percentage. And then when our, uh, you know, when the economy does better, which I hope it sure does, um, that you, more revenues will be available to put aside for a rainy day when the economy, and it will go down again. And then we'll, then that way, the, then there won't be a bump, and then that way you'll be able to serve the people that need the services much more effectively. Thank you. Well, over the last decade, while there's been a 22% cut in this funding, what uh, the task force of Supervisor Leopold and Ms. Coleman uh, sat on showed also is that as a percentage of the overall county budget, actually the reduction was about 40% uh, of, the, of the share when it went down from a, a little over 5% to about 3% of the actual net cost of the county. One of my concerns about fixing it is that is the stability of funding is the most important element to uh, a social service or community program. You leverage about, about a 15-fold thing. That's, that's an important thing that's very rarely talked about within the debate, that every dollar you receive, you're basically turning around and making $15 worth of services associated with it. How can you, just like in your life, you need a stability of understanding what your next paycheck's going to be, whatever it may be, how can you make decisions moving forward without knowing where the next amount of funding is going to be. So it's essential to have a stability of funding. The fluctuations, the percentage of funding exclusively being tied to the county's element it could be problematic. And secondly, as the county budget goes down, that actually is when your services and needs uh, disproportionately go up. So if it were directly tied to that, I could see that being a problematic element as well. So I think what's really important is ensuring the stability of funding. I don't know if the answer is, is a floor, as, as uh, Mr. McPherson said, but having some sort of element so that you know, be it a multi-year budgeting process that provides you with some sort of, of number, that you can then work with that to, uh, to leverage that money with, with grants and foundations and other services to ensure that you can continue to provide, provide the services even when uh, the economy turns down. Thank you. In the years that I was in the city council, I think you know one of the things that I always uh, agree with: you are the public, you are, you are the one who are adopt the policy to us. In a sense, you are the ones who are responsible to let us know what your needs are. Uh, anything that uh, we cut services, also we you would be able to we cut the services of the other departments. I think you know the, the police department, the fire department depends on you on the different needs that we have. At the same time, you know, it's important to say, 
uh, maybe some of these, the multi-level of funding, that's something that we discussed a lot with you when we were, I was in the, in the subcommittee, uh, maybe a three-year funding, but you, in reality, say to us, no, we don't want that. Uh, but maybe in the future we can be able to discuss that kind of policy to receive multi-funding for your agencies. And also at the same time, you are the ones who can let us know what the needs are in the community, what are really are. And that's the way we look at it. Because you are the ones who know what's going on in the community. You are the other ones who let us know uh, the needs are. For example, <clears throat> I know one of the things that I was very uh, devastating that the funding for papas, you know, uh, that is being cut, and, and he's trying to get some funding from the county, and the county trying to work something out. But you know, those kind of services that that we need in, in our community are important in community, and you are the ones who can let us know how we can help you. Uh, public policy is something that we have to look at it and work with you and see which one is the best for for all of you, because the 50 agency and plus maybe you're going to be developed more. Uh, new programs, it's important to us. It's important to the community, it's important to the whole county. Thank you. Um, I, I'm a big supporter of a fixed percentage going to the nonprofits. I think it would help you guys to better forecast your <coughs> annual budgets. And I think you guys can also do, I mean, I'm, I'm a big supporter of KQED, and I always make sure that when I donate money, I donate when there's matching funds. Cause some fat cat out there is going to give half. Well, it's probably a foundation like HP or somebody like that. But um, I think that would help you guys to be able to budget, know how many people you need to hire, how much you're going to get from the county. Of course, that's going to fluctuate with the county. But I think being also a small business owner, I know the county can do a better job of making the small businesses like me more effective so that we generate more income, hire more people, pay more sales tax. One of the things I've noticed in watching some of the state, uh, the county board of equalized, uh, county board of supervisor meetings on TV is the, the percentage of sales tax that Santa Cruz, the city of Santa Cruz and the city of Capitola generate is a much larger portion of their uh, revenue, their budget that they, that they uh, take in versus the county. The county, it's, it's like at the bottom, and I, and I see why. Because they don't treat me like I'm worth anything. They've they sued me, they, they replaced the sewer system and blocked off my business for months at a time. And uh, even on the 4th of July, they blocked off my whole parking lot and wouldn't let anybody out on the beach, so I had a, a, a poor 4th of July. So I see there's ways that the small business can generate income as well, but I like the fixed percentage for the, the nonprofits because that'll help you guys to definitely manage your business better. And then if, if I'm on this county supervisors, I can help make the businesses more successful because I know what they're doing now is not going to help businesses make more, be more successful and generate more sales tax, which lifts all the boats in the county. Thank you. Now for our third and last question, and we'll start with District 5 with this one. Uh, do you have any specific plans or pro proposals that you will champion if elected to support the county residents who receive Human Care Alliance services? Oh, we're talking about supporting the clients and the people that we serve. Um, I think that one of the first things that I would be doing is reaching out to you, the stakeholders, and what do you what do you see is important? How do you see that we can help, whether it be the youth that needs that needs food, whether it be the infant that needs food, or the youth that needs activities, or whether it be the seniors, or whether it be those that are going through hospice? I mean, it's it's the range of services provided. You know, is from early infancy to death services and everything in between. Um, what I would like to champion within my own district is more collaboration and more services brought to the 5th District. Um, I've been championing trying to build a community center, rec facility, uh, through Youth First we looked at trying to build uh, a, a multi-level community center that would house a multitude of nonprofits. That's still a vision I have, it's a shared vision. I'm seeing part of that vision come true down in Live Oak with the new Boy Scouts, uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club, excuse me, center that's opening. 
that is the work of a multitude of agencies working together with a common vision and goal. I want to see that same thing happen up in the 5th District. You know, we have a huge need there. I feel that I understand the needs of that community because I live in it. I also understand the needs in that community because I have participated on so many different levels with the services that are provided. You know, the, 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 positive, dis, uh, the positive parenting that workshops that I went with with my wife and my kids. You know, I have what is, you know, a typical family today. I've got a 13-year-old a, a stepson, you know, and that was a challenge when we got, got together. And what did I do? I reached out immediately to you guys here to help me to learn how to be a stronger family, to be a better dad, to be positive to the family, and we need to keep those services going. Thank you. I think in the, as the county, uh, what we can do is to follow your example, and that's to coordinate our efforts better with some other public agencies. And two come to mind in particular, our public education system, we should be able to work with that better for recreational sites and so forth, maybe coordinate efforts so we can have better recreational opportunities for the general populace. The transit district. Can we somehow get the, the, the transit, the bus, to provide services to the schools? So schools don't have to have that on their, that burden, but we, we can carry that and, and help, help provide uh, transportation network services for everybody in the county. One thing that we need to do is follow the types of things that you have. We have to collaborate to get to make things better. And as I said before, each and every one of you serve on a, in a very important public service agency. And, and I think we can't take away from any of you because what you've done, the example that you've led, you have created more flexibility and more efficiency than we could ever do in government. So I want to follow your example. I think that's the way to do it, is to try to coordinate our efforts, and even to a greater degree, the best we can. And I do think that the way the county can provide you more services is to have a better economy and more people working so they feel good about themselves, that they're providing for themselves and their family, and in turn can give to others. That's the core of what we need to do. And this county needs to establish some kind of a basic system where people in business and manufacturing have a better sense of what's available and what they can do to provide that service to create jobs that'll, that in which people will spend revenue to provide more service so we can provide more services in the county. It really goes in the whole circle and I think we really need to work and be dedicated to doing that. Thank you. experience with but um, but I do believe that again the communication between the county and uh, human service human alliance uh, is critical that we work together and we open up that channel um, again about the, the money thing about the economy when the economy is going good and if you, you're making we're making better revenue it'd be real smart to know what to do to put that savings uh, to invest that so we have it for a rainy day so to have a good communication and creating this uh, organization is probably the best thing that's ever have really happened because you know just think if you didn't have or weren't all organized together and I think this is really a good example of, of getting together and being very effective that way instead of just having a bunch of uh, groups that wouldn't be that way um, and then I'm all open to brainstorming um, to get to increase revenue into the into the um, into the system as well. Um, and there may be ways to include customer customers that actually can afford the services into the system uh, to help increase revenue to make this, the the entire system more effective. Thank you.
Well, I, I see three ways that this can be done. I, I think that the, the most important element is the stable funding components, that you know what you're going to get on any given year. And I think you can do that uh, through balanced and respected economic development. We have to recognize that, that there is a way that we pay for our programs, and the way that we do it is through a, a form of economic development that respects the values and the vision of our, of our county. I, I would say that, that uh, number two would be uh, that these community program funding decisions need to be made by accountable elected bodies, meaning that they need to be made by the Board of Supervisors. As I'm sure you've seen, there's been a trend and a movement toward trying to sort of outsource these decisions of cuts to be it um, consultants or committees or whatever it may be. I think some of the method that uh, was done at the county level made sense, making sure that the Board of Supervisors partnered with the, the organizations here in a very transparent and open process. That's a, a very key element. And the third thing, although this isn't directly associated with HCA. I think it impacts a number of people, definitely within my district, I know within Supervisor Leopold's district, is, is rent control and ensuring that there is a stable, uh, affordable housing stock for people, especially throughout the mobile home component within our area. I, I mean, for seniors and low-income people, there's been a tax on it throughout the county. And I can only imagine that next, the county is going to be what's under attack. And you need to ensure that you're electing people that are going to fight for, for the people that really just don't have anywhere else to go with in those situations. As I've walked through a number of mobile home parks within my district, I've really seen uh, people that are scared, especially in Capitola that just had it removed. Uh, I've, I've walked through areas where people are afraid that what happened in Capitola is going to happen in other portions of the county. And I think that it's essential that we make sure that, if you, that you maintain a, a, some sort of stable, affordable housing stock. And I see that a lot through the mobile home park. So I see that as, a, as the third component. Thank you. I think the uh, specific plan is something that uh, we have done in the city of Watsonville very, very well, like uh, Mr. Mark Gibson said, is that to partner with the public institutions is very important. That's, that's what we do with, uh, with the Parks and Recreation. We work together so we can be able to provide those services in our community. Also, uh, I want to include not only the uh, institution, but also the business community, uh, the healthcare, the hospitals, be able to be partnered, to be able to, to come in and assist and support our, the Human Care Alliance. Uh, it's important that everybody can work together. Like uh, the Washington Community Hospital, be able to work with the Salud Para La Gente, to so be able to provide some of the emergency uh, uh, problems that we have within, within our community. It's important that we get coordinate and support each other. I think it's something that, you know, there are plans that we can be able to work with. We set up, you know, an intergovernmental uh, uh, committee within our city of uh, Watsonville so we can be able to work with the different agencies so we can be able to know what can we support, how we can be able to work together so we can be able to better serve our community. That's something that uh, we'll be able to do with the county. It's important that we can do that. And also coming to you, uh, because I think you know what proposals you would like to have. The multi-level funding, that's important, something that is stable maybe, that's something that, that we can work with. And at the same time, it's important that we can be able to, to work together, not only as, as county officials, but also as a community, as uh, social services, that we can be able to do that. With that, I think it's something that, and for the, uh, for the mobile home, uh, in the city also, you know, we, we adopted ordinance, we have very control for the mobile home, so, so we have done it. Uh, now we have to do it to the county so they don't get cut. So, so we have done that in the city of Watsonville, we did an ordinance, and now if I become elected in the county, I will forward so we can do an ordinance so we can have a uh, record draw for the mobile home parks. Um, as, as, far, as far as a specific plan proposal, I can, I can you know, I think there's some good ideas here at the table. I have an idea that, you know, I started to talk about briefly is I, I have a, a business right on the beach in Rio del Mar. And since I'm outside of uh, the main cities in the county of Santa Cruz and Capitola and Watsonville, I think it's a very underutilized area of the county, but it's still a very attractive uh, location for tourists to come. And, you know, I, I've always thought that it's great. It, it should be a crime that there's no art and wine festival down on the beach right where I'm located. I happen to have a 3,000 square foot patio right next to the business there, and I'd love to reach out to the nonprofits to do events like that through the summer where you guys can raise money and I get to sell a few beers. And uh, you know, it, it's a great way to get your message out to the public, teach the public about what you guys do. And um, 
uh, you know, if anybody wants to talk to me about it, uh, I, I like I said, I like to apologize for not reaching out to you, but I've been fighting the county tooth and nail for the last five years, and I'm um, just getting my head above water, and would love to uh, talk to anybody that's interested in, in doing some sort of an event in Rio Del Mar on the beach. Thank you. I come into work every day. Uh, thinking about the, the plans that I have for helping people served by the Human Care Alliance uh, because there are so many county residents who are served uh, by HCA, tens of thousands of people. And there's a couple of specific things that I would say. One is I'm working very hard to figure out how we can uh, help people facing foreclosure. We are having to fight the state in order to be able to do things here in Santa Cruz that the state thinks uh, they've taken care of. Um, I'm fighting uh, to make sure that we have uh, affordable housing and finding a new funding source now that redevelopment's gone away. I'm fighting to protect uh, mobile home rent control because here in the first district we have more mobile home parks than anywhere in uh, the county and they provide the, the largest stock of affordable housing in our county. Uh, after uh, we did our redevelopment meetings, people said they, they cared about economic development and I championed the, the hiring of the first staff uh, at the county that would focus on the economic lives of uh, people who live in the unincorporated area every day, all day. It was shocking to me that we didn't, that we didn't have that. And we're going to begin a series of community conversations about what we would all like to see in economic, what we envision our economic future to be, and work to help build that in, in during my next term. Uh, a major part of our county funding goes to the criminal justice system and with the prison uh, realignment that's going on, it provides an opportunity for us to reconceptualize what we do uh, when it comes to uh, law enforcement. It's a very exciting time and it gives us a chance to redirect uh, our resources to, uh, in, uh, to have a more accountable system that yields better uh, outcomes, that doesn't rely on incarceration, but instead works with uh, you as partners uh, to help provide services. Uh, on health care, we need to work to expand the low-income health program and make sure that we're ready for health care reform that's going to start in 2014. And lastly, we need to uh, provide uh, uh, programs for our youth. I'm working right now uh, to build an 11,000 square foot boys and girls club uh, on the Shoreline Middle School campus. I've worked with uh, the Soquel High uh, campus to make sure that there's safe routes to school to get down to, to Soquel Village. I'm working with schools throughout my district to make sure that we partner because at the end of the day, the taxpayers believe that we should all work together and not fight over who's in control of what, but work together for our shared outcomes. I look forward to doing it in my next term. Charles Paulden. Um, I learned something a long time ago. Somebody said there's three words that we can change to change ourselves and change our world. But you can versus and but I can versus and you should. But I can and I can and I can and I can. We can do it. We need a bigger vision. My problem with Mr. Leopold is he doesn't work really, really hard. I just doesn't think he works very efficiently. Um, I tried to get a boys and girls club in Pleasure Point. We don't have a school there. We don't have any place to meet. He's putting a boys and girls club in a school next to a community center where he put another park in another park. To me, it's not all within this one mile radius. Um, safe routes to school. They're proposing a bridge to go to Chanticleer rather than one at Madison Lane to go to Good Shepherd School where the kids are playing soccer. Simple things. How do we do more with less? One proposal I want to share with you is my sister down in Santa Barbara has works with a, a, a group that's called Arts from Scrap. It funds and it is part of the whole organization at Santa Barbara. Take those people as a model. They've done a lot of good work. <coughs> so they work together. They take stuff out of the waste stream. The artists come together. The schools come together. There's so many things that we can do together. Also, buying local. As a local businessman for all these years, the multiplier effect of buying local is 10 times. Maybe we need a local script. Maybe we could pay each other that. Because every time we go to Costco or build, a, build on our farmland and buy our food from Costco from China, we're taking food out of our own mouths. So we've got to look, we've got to be smarter, we've got to do systems analysis, and we've got to work effectively, efficiently, elegantly, not just real, 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 real hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for your time. Yeah, I disagree with you. I think uh, Leopold's working very hard, tirelessly, as his posters do say. Uh, but I think the problem is, is that he's setting up new bureaucracies. He's talking about a new economic, you know, as if the government knows how to make business work. I mean, you, you heard the story what happened to this gentleman here. He got 62 pages of absolute, this is like Hitler's enabling act. You go to uh, Gary Arnold, Man Against the Machine, read this thing. It is absolutely outrageous. Uh, you got a CEO for the county makes over three hundred thousand dollars in pension, uh, all kinds of uh, additives. Um, I think we need to uh, cut down and trim the uh, county so it goes to uh, streamline this thing. So it goes to people that do need the help. And I'm a, I am an alarmist, and I would spend my time not as one of the five rubber stamping. You, you can vote for any of these people that have been incumbents or part of the machine here, and it doesn't make any difference. You're going to get a you know, four to one if you get if you. It chose me. But uh, I'm, I'm talking about alarmists because you're getting damaged physically uh, by these chemtrails. And you have two instances. If you go to, uh, for instance, Ted Turner last summer speaking at the vineyards up in Northern California, he was talking to the people drinking the wine and the cheese. He's calling for a 90% reduction of the world's population. And they're sitting there. You know, the, the applaud wasn't quite as hard, but you know, they were applauding this. Now you got Jacques Cousteau, that's UN. This is ICLEI. They adopted the UN uh, draft. You go to my site, you'll find it signed by Sam Farr, who flies the UN flag there. It has nothing to do with your county. They don't care about you. They're administrators for the ICLEI and the World Bank. That's what's happening to you. Jacques Cousteau, you go to the UNESCO magazine, he calls for reducing the world population by 350,000 people per day. Uh, they're working on a coli. I call them a Malthusian political machine because they're, they're, they're pushing the vaccinations. They're, they're forcing the fluoride. Uh, uh, you look at the Georgia Guidestones, they're talking about reducing the world's population to a half a billion. These people are in league with it. They don't decide their, their policies locally for you. They get all of their material coming in from the League of Cities or ICLEI or all these other organizations that you don't have any part of. And then they have their Delphi meeting. Fred Keeley will come out here and you'll sit there and you'll play your little thing and you'll end up thinking you're voting for something local. It's not. Now it's now time for a closing statement, two minutes. So let's start with the second district, and Zach, if you wouldn't mind being the first. Well, my statement will be a little different than that. Um, <laughs> but I mean, first of all, what I want to do is simply just thank you guys for taking the time, and thank you for the work that you're doing. It's actually really, I got to say, really heartwarming to see how much support you do have. You probably don't hear that very often, so it's unfortunate that it takes forums like this to receive that kind of feedback. You know, for the last decade, I have worked in, in, in local law enforcement. What I've seen are the end results of public policy decisions, meaning I've seen what happens when you do make cuts to education. I've seen what, what happens when you do make uh, cuts to community programs and social service programs. I've seen the, the issues when you don't have the parenting classes that Mr. Hammer was speaking of. And I'd like to be able to impact the front end. I feel like all I get to see <coughs> is the back end, the bad side of it, at a point where it's almost too late to be able to have that impact. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm really running, to see whether we can actually make a difference on the first five steps of the process as opposed to just, just seeing the last process. I, it, it would be a real honor to have your individual support. If nothing else, I, I wouldn't, my wife wouldn't give me a hard time about having all those endorsement cards in my living room anymore. Um, I'm sorry, but we've only been married two years, so I don't know if that disqualifies me. But I mean, I really, I really love her. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's just a time thing. But yeah. So I'm sorry it wasn't quite as exciting as, as uh, Mr. Arnold's speech, but uh, I definitely appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to us, to hear our thoughts, and just know that uh, that uh, you are supported by a number of us. And if, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected, you'll continue to be supported by me. So thank you. Um, you know, first of all, I uh, really want to really thank you, all of you, for the thousands and thousands of people that you have um, helped throughout the years that in my community in the city of Watsonville. And being part of the subcommittee, I was able to read your proposals and see the number of, of help and, and the number of clients that you'll be able to, to help in, in my city. Uh, it is something that is very important to, to see that you continue that. If 
for me, it's very important that every community have this kind of support so they can be able to continue to their lives uh, and, and do better. Uh, at the same time, the support is needed uh, from you as uh, Human Care Alliance as well the services. It's important to, to have it. If you elect me, uh, uh, I will continue. You know that you've got my, my full support and it will come with different ways to continue to support you and to be able to get more, uh, more funding for, for the programs. But one thing I would like to see is that we like to see more of the involvement of the youth, uh, of the high schools, uh, the students. Uh, that's something that uh, for me was very uh, touching when I decided to have a city council meeting at Watsonville High School. And the things that they don't know what local government doesn't do and what they want and what they need is different from us, you know, from, a, from the seniors, from the other people, the older people, the other people themselves. It's important to hear their voices because I think they are the future and it's important to be able to, uh, to work with them because I think we need to have more programs for them because I know a lot of our, of our youth are hurting in different ways and we need to provide more services, more services to them. Thank you. say but I'll think of something. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just uh, I just want to you know uh, let you know I'm a small business guy and I and I've been running a business in Santa Cruz County for five years and um, I know that when I have extra money I make sure that I help out people in the local community I have a lot of people that come through the door every week and um, I know who's hurting, I know who's not, I know who's doing well and who's doing not, and everybody's hurting right now. And uh, as a small businessman, I think I can help uh, eliminate some of the red tape that our county has in place that's trapped me in uh, bear trap after bear trap. And um, by doing that, I think these small, these small businesses will donate to your causes, which will help uh, your agencies provide help to people. Because like I said, I think all small business owners are are a big part of their community and you get to know the people that you do business with and their customers. And, um, I, I, I would uh, definitely be very, uh, uh, I would strive to make sure these small businesses survive and, then, and that would definitely help your agencies more, I believe. And like I said, if you guys get down to the Seabree Stabber come in and talk to me, I'm there all weekend. So I don't have just set business hours, I'm there for three days. So. Uh, Come on in and uh, let me know what I can do to help your organizations. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you for inviting me uh, here tonight. Uh, it, I appreciate so many people came out to hear the views of the, of the candidates for the Board of Supervisors. I also want to thank you for your tireless advocacy for your clients, for your organization, and for the issues we all care about. I believe that local government is a very effective form of government. And, it, and I believe that local government uh, has the ability to help people out, change people's lives, and protect the most vulnerable in our community. Uh, I work hard on doing that every day. Uh, I, uh, I've been grateful for the support that I received over the three and a half years that I've been in office. And I'm grateful that in this campaign, I received the endorsement of majorities on the Board of Supervisors, the City Councils in Santa Cruz and Capitola, uh, the Live Oak School Board, the Soquel School Board, the Mountain <coughs> Elementary School Board, the uh, Loma Prieta School Board, the Fire Board, uh, the Neighborhood Association leaders and the Business Association leaders. Uh, they have endorsed me because I work with them and I believe that the, the, the challenges that we face as a community can best be solved when we work together. There are lots of great ideas out there and there are lots of ways that we can work together to make county government the most efficient and effective uh, form of government. Uh, Sam Farr, our congressman, uh, said to me recently that, you know, for the next 10 years, there's gonna be gridlock in DC. The action is at the local level. We have proven that we are an innovative county, that you as, as uh, human care providers have been very creative in the way you provided services and served as a model not only to each other, but to the entire state of California and the nation. We need to keep that ingenuity, that creativeness, and we need to be able to provide the resources so we can, can help people who are in need, maybe some for the first time. I look forward to continue working with you in my second term, and I thank you for coming here tonight. Um, 
I agree with Mr. Leopold's words. I don't agree with his actions. Um, I've been a part of Pleasure Point for 40 years. Pleasure Point started Pack Your Trash. Pleasure Point, that's where Jay Moriarty, if you don't know Jay Moriarty, he's an ideal. One of these, he's an ideal. I was able to go to the previous supervisory and get um, an honorarium for his family because we appreciate people who do work. We had an opportunity to build on what we were doing with CORE, with the youth, with the Sheriff Activity League. Mr. Leopold <coughs> came to me and asked me, because I was a community leader, and I had him to my house, and I endorsed him. But when it came time to have a community center, when he had $5 million, he said, I should do it. I'm willing to do it. Give me the power. I've got plenty of good ideas. I, brought, I started the Pleasure Point Fourth of July parade, building on our, on our community, building local jobs, enforcing. The Sentinel may be, think surfing industry is an old-timey idea. It's a $400 million source of income for our community. Jimmy Phillips, who made the Santa Cruz dock, he endorses me. I have doctors, lawyers, infant heart surgeons, businessmen. I would love John Leopold to do his job. I just don't think he has the larger vision. He, he's, he's a follower. He's a cutter of ribbons. He's not a builder of bridges. I had a bridge from his house to Madison Lane. He took it out of the funding services. So my problem is not that John is an excellently uh, trained politician, poli sci, learned from his dad, came from the East, likes what we have. I want to hold on to what we have. I'm a fifth generation Californian. I'm a 40 year resident. I, the Sentinel may think I'm a throwback to a bygone era, but truth, justice, and the American way is good enough for my grandpa. It's good enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you really should look at the endorsements, and especially that of uh, my opponent. Um, you'll find, again, Louis Lieho, who uh, headlined or was in the forefront of adding the uh, fluoride. You've got two of the Board of Supervisors that okays the chemtrails on you. You've got uh, Sheriff Wallach, who came in and uh, forced the PG&E uh, uh, spy meters on your houses, and even when they, the people voted ag against this thing. Now, those meters were designed at Fort Meade, and you go to their website, and you'll find that they can cause dizziness, nauseousness, unconsciousness. And if you look three weeks ago, David Petraeus, the head of the CIA, bragged that he doesn't have to get warrants anymore because they spy on every damn thing you got going on in your house. Um, now, Zach, uh, you know, he, he's really great there. He's talking about uh, his uh, uh, work back east. Well, he campaigned for Joseph Lieberman, who's a member of Rockefeller's Council on Foreign Relations, part of the Project for a New American Century that brought us into the Middle East War. Um, one of his uh, donors is Sean Smith. Sean Smith recruits for the World Bank. These guys work for the World Bank. They're administering the United Nations law. You're being cheated out of self-government. Leopold here abolished the, uh, what this guy got creamed over, businesses all over this county. Uh, they had a planning appeals board that's state mandated. It's no cost to the people. There are people that are engineers and architects that volunteer for that board. He put the resolution through. Ellen Perry seconded. Ellen Perry endorsed him. She appointed her husband to the planning commission. You've got nepotism. You've got outside influence in here. You've got a machine that's running circles around you. You've got a newspaper here that won't tell you a damn thing. It, 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 there's a dot thick enough to line your canary cage. And you're being treated like uh, animals out there dropping these particulates on you. This is serious. This has to do with your health and the people that are coming to you that are uh, affected by these ailments. You look up that USA Today report and wonder why they don't ask their health department to look into the chemtrails. God, any kid can look up and see it. What's wrong with these people? They all endorse each other. This is a machine. They're taking your money. They're giving the CAO $300,000 a year. It's outrageous. You're being screwed by this political machine. I'm the man against the machine.
thank everybody for coming today um, and, and to hear us speak and for sitting here for a couple of hours. I know it's tough. Um, I'm a product, a local product of the services that you provide. Um, my life has been changed dramatically with the support that I've received from a multitude of these agencies. Um, without it, I wouldn't be here today. Um, I have a strong family because of those services as well. Um, I have a multitude of community support behind me. I've been endorsed by several current uh, fire chiefs, current fire board members, <coughs> current direct board members, current water board members, um, Luis Alejo and Bill Monning, local unions are all behind me and believe that a local voice can make a difference. Um, I look forward to your support. I look forward to your vote. I look forward to you passing the message um, and going out June 5th. That's what this is all about. And more importantly, as your supervisor, I will continue to champion the nonprofits and understand how vital the services that you provide are. And I will continue to get my hands dirty. My company in the last five years, along with my partner, have been out there at every nonprofit event that we've been that we've been asked to. I have donated a ton of in-kind contributions through labor, through materials, through barbecuing at, 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 again at the human race, through building gazebos that are up at Garahan Park that we restored it. $350,000 park renovation would not have been done without the community support. I support the community. In turn, you guys come back and support me in making other dreams come true. I want to continue that. I want to be that person that you that is approachable and that can communicate so that we can solve the needs that are out there. Thank you. And these, these are tough financial times, as we know, for everybody, <clears throat> and even government, and local government in particular, county governments, city governments, because of the redevelopment hit that we had that was very, very important to the revenue stream that we have in this county. And so now we're going through realignment, and we have to restructure some of the things, and it's going to make it better, because we can do it better, <clears throat> excuse me, at the local level, because I believe local government is the best government. And the next realignment, too, is going to come through, and we're going to, it's going to be concentrated on health care and Medicaid and the levels that will you know, be really kick into place in about 2014. We have to be ready for it. We have to know people who are, are saying, this is where it's going. This is what uh, we have to do. We have to say, this is what we want. This is how we think it should work, too, at the local level. And we can make that statement just as you have in your own agencies that you represent. You are a model, and you are very much appreciated in this community, in this county, because you are really a model of what, how this uh, uh, Human Care Alliance should work in the state, in any county in this state. I, I think that we, we need to, for us to come back, we have to see the economics of this whole county improve. We can do that and we can play an aggressive role in that. To let the small business person and the family earn a decent living so they can go out and provide for their families and in turn provide more for the services that are needed for those who are needy. We can do that because we have done that before. I, I am committed to doing what my father said to me. We're going to leave this place a better, we're going to leave this place better than when we found it. I have been endorsed as well by the Sheriff, the Deputy Sheriff's Association, Senior Coalition, most members of the Santa Cruz and Scotts Valley City Councils. I know how to work with people. I can get the job done. I've done it before, and I would really love to have the opportunity to do it for you in Santa Cruz County in the 5th District as your County Supervisor. Thank you. Exactly. It really should be called a prison release program. Um, let's face it; it's all. It's basically a failure of the state to to manage prison populations, um, and a lot of reasons why that happened. You know, people say it's a three strikes law, whatever. <laughs> but it's kind of funny how 
they come up with this euphemism of calling it a realignment plan. I hope it does work better, and I wanted to mention that because your services will be needed to be increased because of this. And also, that is another reason why I believe we need to focus in on the economy to create jobs, because there, you, basically we're going to have a population of nonviolent criminals, out of state prisoners, come here. And, you know, I think I wouldn't put the word realignment on it. It's basically a prison release plan. <laughs> um, and it's a failure of our state government. Um, and I just want to reiterate, number one, I support your services. Like I said, I don't know a lot about I know the ones up in our neighbor neck of the woods. And they uh, fantastic. You have my full pledge of your support. Number two, uh, I like the idea of the percentage, like uh, Rich McGinnis talked about. I think it would be a much better thing to have a percentage when times are good. Um, then you'll be able to uh, put away money and savings. We need communicate. All effective organizations work good communicating with each other. That includes your organization, the county, have this extra money, put it away for a rainy day. And finally, yes, I really didn't have any specific plans, but I'm really open to these fundraising things and things way to inject more money into the system so that you can be even more effective. Thank you. On behalf of the Human Care Alliance uh, agencies, board members, staff, and the recipients of certain services, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. I want to thank the candidates for being here and their thoughtful concerns and comments. Uh, this is now time for you. If you want to ask them some specific questions or look, pick up their literature, please do so. Uh, thanks to Santa Cruz Community Television for filming tonight and to the Live Oak Senior Center for providing this space. Mm -hmm.